And let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare your Lordship over your people. You died, Lord Jesus Christ. These are your people. You died. You died. Your blood was shed for your people. We are your people. We belong to you. Everything about our lives concerns you. Jesus, you died for us because you are concerned for every single person right here. You are, you are concerned for the children, for the fetus that's still to be born. You are concerned about us. And I declare your glory, your mercy, your grace upon your people this day in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, you shall minister to your people. You will minister because it is you, Holy Spirit, that your people want to hear. They want to hear a word from the throne of the Father. And I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, to put a seal upon this word, to put a seal upon your people and bless your people. While the word is being preached, bless your people, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to talk uh, on prayer and intercession. What I want to zero in on is, is it worthwhile praying? Is it worthwhile interceding? Should you pray? Should you intercede? Do we have proof in the Bible that, that, that if I shift from an intellectual approach to God into a so-called spirit being and pray, will I have an answer from God? Will I realize something that is out of, out of the natural realm? Will I really receive this, this spiritual concept? Will I really understand? Will God supernaturally intervene? Will he do that? Because if, if, if we don't get an answer from God, something from the word that can assure us that praying is worthwhile, then why pray? Why pray? It's, let's not be religious about this and say, well, the Bible says pray. Well, we must pray. Something will happen. This will happen. We want concrete proof from the Bible that our prayer is a priority. It is not something trivial, something mundane, something that, oh, well, the church of God, one of those things is you must pray. No. The Bible shows us that prayer is a priority. We will come to that. When a man prays, when you pray. You are having a conversation with God. It is a supernatural conversation. The moment you start praying, God listens. It is a supernatural prayer. But when we talk about an intercessor, it's praying, but it is a different kind of prayer. An intercessor is someone that carries you in the prayer. Is concerned about the next person. An intercessor is somebody that comes in between and help you. So they talk to God on your behalf. Noah, if you remember Noah, the story of Noah. Noah, God told Noah to carry a people over the flood. The flood was his judgment. God asked him to carry a people. He carried his, his family over from an old world. When the ark landed, when it settled, he was in the new world. From one world to another world. An intercessor can carry, can pray and carry a person out of the old into the new. That means an intercessor, while praying, can change a human being, 
can cherish and nourish a human being and present the human being without spot, without blemish. God is looking for an intercessor. He needs an intercessor. Yes, you can pray, but he also needs an intercessor. Someone that comes in between. Jerusalem. The Bible talks about Jerusalem. God spoke to Ezekiel and prophet Isaiah and told them, I, I will set watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. So in those days, there were 12 watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. That, that is the work of an intercessor. You're watching to protect. You watch to protect your family. You watch to protect your home. God needs intercessors. God is seeking intercessors. Somebody who will talk to him about, about somebody else. The other person is finding it difficult in his problem. So God is looking for somebody who will talk to God on behalf of that person. I want to introduce you to a man called a man called Abraham. Abraham came in between God and Sodom and Gomorrah. There was impending judgment over Sodom and Gomorrah. A very dangerous thing to do to come before God. And in, there are different, different levels of intercession. Yet, God will is being challenged. An intercessor can, can change the will of God. Uh, the will of God can be changed by intercessors. Abraham stands before God. God says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham says, but Lord, if I find 50 righteous people in that place, will you still destroy? God said, no, I won't. Abraham says, if I find 45, God says, I won't. And carried on from 40 to 30 to 20 to 10. God was prepared to listen to an intercessor. God listens to somebody who intervenes. And God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because, because they, they couldn't, he couldn't find 10 righteous people. But God listens. He hears you. His will can be changed. And we, we need to understand something. We must stop sitting back and saying, well, it's, it's everything. You know, for everything we say, it's the will of God. It's the will of God. We can change the will of God. God says in the Bible, he will hide nothing from his servant, Abraham. How, how important is that? He hides nothing. He wants to hear you speak. It's a holy conversation. He wants to hear man talks back. Remember Moses. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. He's upset. Understandably. God is angry also because the people down are worshipping idols. Remember the story where they melted the jewelry made a cow and they were worshipping. And God said, he's going to destroy the people. But see what Moses says. He comes in between God. It's a dangerous job. A dangerous task to say, I'm an intercessor at this level. Go, Lord, God, hold on, hold on. Exodus. Look at Exodus chapter 32, verse 9 to 12. See how God's will changes. For a man. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, 
that my rod or red may wax hot against them, there, and that I may consume them. Imagine God declaring those things. And I will make thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thy rod wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Man talking to God. That is the power of intercession. You come in between. And you speak and you are heard. You are taken seriously. Some of us feel, no, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. How many years we are praying for something? It is not taken seriously. Some of the things got answered. Some are not yet answered. It will be answered in the way God wants to answer. And we will come to that scripture just now to show you how valuable your prayers are. Uh, what you prayed for 20 years ago. God talks about it now. We will come to scripture that shows you that your prayer is not something uh, mundane or trivial. Your prayer, God does not give your prayer marginal, marginal attention. He's more for, he's more for the people that are dancing and singing and uh, preaching or evangelizing or healing the sick or raising the dead. Aha! Be careful. The Bible shows you, and we will come to that, and show you that prayer is a priority that God holds. That single prayer that you prayed 20 years ago, 30 years ago, every single day, if it's not answered, every single day, God is looking at it. He's got angels in charge of it. It's brought before God every single day. Therefore, we do not underestimate our prayer. We do not underestimate it. In the book of Job, Job chapter 42, verse 7 to 10. In this verse, God is angry with Job's friends. And he doesn't want to listen to to the friends. He doesn't want to listen to the repentance. He's upset with them. But he tells them to go to Job. Tell Job to pray for them. So he, Job is now an intercessor. And Job is praying for his friends. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Timonite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. Therefore take unto you seven, now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourself a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly. But as you go through it, you find that God listens to Job and God saves them from destruction. God listens to you when you are an intercessor. And in that, God, the Bible also says, and God blessed Job double portion. Double portion. Don't underestimate yourself when you pray. Don't say, well, I prayed like this for my husband or for my wife. But after two weeks, where's the change? The change is taking place inside, slowly, 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 slowly. It will give birth. You can't get, you can't get married today and say, tomorrow, where's the baby? Be patient. God is incubating, is incubating. Your prayer is incubating. 
your request. Do never give up. He hears you. I was, I always thought, as I grew up, most boring thing in the church is prayer. For me, it was. For me, it was boring. Okay, sing a song, play some music, show us a movie. Prayer was boring until I had a supernatural invention, intervention from God. A supernatural touch that made me change my old perception of prayer and intercession. It made me understand that when I talk, God not only listens, He comes, He overwhelms you, and He ministers to you. Do not underestimate your prayers and your intercession. In Luke chapter 22, verse 32, Jesus is praying. He's, a, he's like an intercessor there. He talks to Peter. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus was on the cross. You remember that? Jesus on the cross. He prayed. He interceded on the cross. He's nailed, he's suffering, he's in pain. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Intercessor, he's still standing in between, even in pain and in suffering. He still remained an intercessor. In pain and in suffering. Remember Jesus went up the uh, Mount Gethsemane. Remember what happened there was Jesus just did the so-called Last Supper. He prayed with his 12 disciples. 12 disciples. They come out of the Last Supper. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He, still, he, was, he just prayed with 12 disciples. But he wants to pray. But when he goes there, he, takes, he tells the disciples, sit. He takes Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. He takes only three. Up further. So he left back nine disciples. He only took three to pray with him. Because in prayer, you have people can be of different levels. So he took three, knowing well, these three will understand the level that I'm going to go into now, into prayer and intercession. So he took the three. But after a while, he left the three. He said, okay, watch and pray. Watch and pray. And intercessor's job is to watch, see in the spirit, and pray. He went further on his own. Jesus prayed on his own this time. Cut the long story short. When he came down, he was upset because he saw them sleeping. And he said, can't you pray for at least one hour? Now, an example that our prayer life, we, must, we can pray with a crowd, with a church, but also, we need to pray with fewer people that maybe you want to pray at a different level, at another level. And that, that group of people, they're not at your level. So you shift and you say, brother, sister, could you three or four people pray with me next week or something? And you'll meet up and you're praying. You're praying at a different level. Maybe they're not speaking in tongues and you want people that speak in tongues. There's nothing wrong if you're not speaking in tongues. I'm just saying you want people to, to, uh, to get into spiritual warfare. So you notice those three or four people. So you're praying separately. And then also in your own time, you got to have a long time with God. You're not going to get all that in the church. You won't get it. The body of Christ is designed for you as an individual. At certain portion, it's corporate. But if you don't, if you don't seek God, if you don't talk to Him, He ain't talking to you. You got to talk to Him. You don't want to hear God speak through a preacher all the time. You want to hear God speak to you. 
He wants to hear you. Because he died for you. When I was, okay, many years ago, I've got a newspaper article here. I just made a copy of it. This is my son and my wife. Then my son I was two years old. I was traveling in Durban, Southern Freeway. And uh, it was just around Christmas and I, was, I forgot to get something. And I, I was rushing to town. Coming back. Just two of us in the vehicle. He was in the front seat. I didn't realize. He, he, he's a two-year-old baby. I didn't realize. And I was traveling about 100K. I did not realize that he opened the window. The warning, warning to all the parents who keep little kids in the front and don't watch them. I didn't know he opened the window. I didn't know he had his head out. I'm, and I'm overtaking. And suddenly, all he's not there. I just saw his feet left in the air. And I reached with my left hand. And he was gone. It was a horrifying experience. And I was banging the door, trying to open it. I'm, I'm supposed to pull, pull the button up, and I didn't do it. In, I, I was all, all shocked, shell-shocked there. Anyway, the person that ran to me helped me to open the door, and I'm running to my son. I can see him there, and cars are going past. His clothes, he was, he was wearing the, I can still remember, a blue outfit, a blue shorts and T-shirts. And he was flapping as the cars were going past, but they were applying brakes and stopping. And I'm going to my son. He was curled up. There was skin on the road. Oh, he was bouncing you. When I reached him, he, he was totally still. For me, he was dead. I didn't know what to do. I was totally helpless, numbed. Um, one of the motorists ran and prayed in the name of Jesus. And my, and my son opened his eyes. And he started crying. And when he started crying, it was hope. It was hope. Power of prayer. The power of prayer. No bones broken. And that's my son who was playing the guitar just now. The power of prayer. But you don't have to go through this to appreciate the power of prayer. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to go through that to start praying. You don't have to fall right down before you start praying. Pray, Jesus said, pray, lest you fall into temptation. How many of you here know Dr. Siva Modli? How many of you heard of him? Dr. Siva Modli he died, and he's still in the mortuary. You must have heard of him, Dr. Silva Modley. And uh, they haven't, well, from what I've heard, they did not have the funeral as yet. Right? And, uh, but powerful preacher on TBN touched, like, his viewers were like 60 million, 70 million people around the world. I will tell you a story about Dr. Silva Modley and us. We both lived, we both from Chatswood in Durban. He lived about 400, 500 meters from us. So uh, he just became a Christian. And I was in my 30s when I was, I was leading uh, intercession in my church. It's a ch it was a church of about 3,000 seater. And they had two services, so it was quite a big church. And Dr. Siva Modli, whom we call Siva, uh, wanted to join me in my intercession meeting. So my wife and I and my two children, they were, they were little. Four o'clock in the morning. I'm explaining to you how, how he reached that ministry. 4 a.m. in the morning, sharp. 
I will start my intercession. 4 a.m. sharp. We don't wait for 5 past 4. 3 o'clock, the people are already coming to the meeting. But my closest person who joined me first was Dr. Siva Modli. He was in his 20s. I was in the 30s. And his, his baby, David, was, I think he, he was just born at the time. So wrap the baby up and come. My son and daughter, we used to wrap them up, take them into sleep. I have to wake up 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning to get ready to go to the intercession meeting. I'm trying to show you how powerful we were driven to go because things were happening there. And we carry our kids there in the sleep. And I'll go, I'll go to Siva's house, Hooter. We'll go with two cars. We'll start the meeting. We, it, just, it just grew to about 30, 40, or, or just over that. But all those who came to that meeting are now pastors. They were ordinary people. But in that meeting, it's in that meeting, we didn't understand. By 5 o'clock in the morning, there was a, a glory that covered us. We didn't know it was called glory. We didn't understand anointing. All we know, we were in this fire. We were soaked. We were drunk in the Holy Ghost. Every day, right through the winter, 4 a.m. sharp, we start. For two hours. And he was a teacher. A math teacher. After that he has to go to school. I was a teacher. I was a sports teacher. The PE teacher. In another school. In Chatswood. And we were. We were experiencing supernatural things. We couldn't put to words. We couldn't understand. Our children were being incubated in glory. We didn't know. After about six, seven years, he said he wants to come to Carlton, to Johannesburg, to open the church. I didn't want to because I'm not called to be a pastor. I have a prophetic mantle. I have an intercessory mantle. I'm a teacher of the word. But a pastor, no. And you walk in something that you're not called, you ain't going to make it. You will make it. And I've been prophesied so many times. People said, uh, or, or maybe not prophecy, but you know, people encourage, open your own church, open your own church. Ah, I'm not called to be a pastor. That's it. I'm called to lift the church, lift a pastor up, lift the leaders, lift people up. That's the ministry. Now, when? And Siva was daring. That's, he was daring. Once, he took a friend of mine who is also a pastor now. They went and prayed for a dead dog. I mean, I, I, I said, what? What he was daring? I don't know what happened to the dog, but I'm not sure. But I know, and I said, hey, what is wrong with this fellow? He was daring. He was a Hindu. He just became a Christian. But he wanted the power of the Holy Ghost. He wanted to see miracles. And he used to pray. He would dare. Legs must grow. Legs grow. Legs grow. He was daring. That he was. He had a mantle for that. He was a good teacher of the word. Now, what you see on TBN, that crowd around the world do not know the matrix of his ministry. It was in intercession. That glory that he received for that was in the 4 a.m. intercession in the morning. The power of intercession. All that's happening, that's been happening on TBN, all that miracles and everything is a direct culmination of all that 4 o'clock morning intercession. Intercession, prayer intercession. It changes you. It revolutionizes your life. It changes you. It gives you a paradigm shift. Suddenly, in few months time, you're thinking different. You're different to your friends. You think differently. You want some separation from your friends now. Because you want to move somewhere higher. 
And everything that we, my wife and I, prophesied over Dr. Siva Modli and his son and his daughter, when she was born later on, came to pass. And what they prophesied over us and my son and my daughter came to pass. We were incubated in glory. You might not understand everything that happens to you when you pray, when you're interceding. But God is working inside you. He's doing something inside you. He's revolutionizing your life. When the glory hits you, when it soaks you, let me tell you something. You can, you can take a little a pin, a pin, and drop it down. But in the spirit realm, because of the glory in you, because of the anointing in you, it causes an earthquake in the spirit realm. It causes tornadoes in the spirit realm against demonic forces. Anointing does this to you. And you get it through prayer and intercession. Listen here. Yeah, it's no use coming to church. If church is all about meeting with people only, it's, it's, you, you got to leave the crowd and get over your own gethsemane. You got to climb your gethsemane. You got to move separately. You got to have an individual, individual face to face Mount Sinai experience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Then you see what happens to you. Your child, your home, then you see it. your eyes will be a whole what God can do. That's what God is looking for. You can be with a crowd, but you cannot ignore your one to one experience with God. You got to do it, you got to do that. I just, I, oh, by the way, do you know what imprecatory prayer is? I'll just throw this in. David in the Bible, he prayed. Some were imprecatory prayers. I M P R E C A T O R Y. Imprecatory prayers. Prayers that curse the enemies. David sometimes prayed. He said, Lord, Cast them. Let their children be vagabond. Uh, all this. I'm, I'm just throwing that in. I didn't say you must pray like that. And some of us are tempted. That's the way to go sometimes. <laughs> right. But I'm just, I'm just throwing that in. Some of the hindrances when you pray. Hindrances in terms of prayer, right? Second Chronicles 7. 14. Uh, Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, right, born again Christian, shall humble themselves and pray. You, you must notice the sequence here. Humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn away from the wicked ways. There's things that you have to do. Then I will hear from heaven. Then only I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive the sin and I will heal the land. Now mine eyes shall be opened and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. That means if you don't do those things, God won't hear you. God wouldn't hear you. Psalm 66. Verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. David is saying, he's confessing that God won't hear me if I regard iniquity in my heart. Now, there's a difference between iniquity and sin. You can sin once in a while. You talk to God, he hears you. But when you sin all the time, and it's uncontrollable. 
It's beyond your control. You, you want to steal. Everywhere you go, you feel like stealing. You come to a church, you want to steal something. You go in a taxi, you want to steal. I mean, stealing is in you. You have been possessed with a demonic spirit. You now, you now have an iniquity inside you. And iniquity is very dangerous because iniquity affects your DNA. Uh, it, it transports, your DNA transports iniquity to the next generation, to your child. Uh, somewhere in the book of Exodus, somewhere there, God wants Israel. He wants Israel about iniquity. He says, the iniquity of your fathers will visit their children from the third and right to down to the third and fourth generation. Iniquity, bloodline. That is why if you're an habitual sinner, you need to stop it because you be, you, it changes into iniquity. Sin becomes iniquity. And God cannot hear you when you're in that state. He can't hear you. Because you're messing around now. You're enjoying your sin. When you're enjoying your sin, it now, you now it, it, your sin graduated into iniquity. You're enjoying it. But you, you want Christ because you want the Savior. The Savior part in you. You don't want the Lord Jesus Christ who will lord over your life. Rule over your life. You don't want that. You want the Savior. You need Him just to save you. You have ulterior motives. So these, these are the hindrances to a good prayer life. Let me show you some of the people who prayed in the Bible. How they pray. Because, because people say or, or they think, Am I praying right? Should I pray like this person? Should I pray like that person? Must I pray loudly, softly, exactly? How should I pray? A conversation with God is any way you are comfortable to talk to God. Now let's see some people, okay? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. All right. Now Anna... She spoke in her heart. She spoke in her heart. She was speaking in her heart. I'm so sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Only a lips moved. That's prayer. And it was a powerful prayer. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put thy wine away from thee. That's one way of praying. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. For if I pray, Paul is talking, if I pray in an unknown tongue and my, uh, uh, my spirit pray, pray it, right? Praying in an unknown tongue, my spirit, my spirit man. Spirit man is here, okay? Out of your belly will flow out rivers of living waters. Your heart is here, actually. This is, they just call that heart, lungs and all. But the heart of your spirit man is here. Unknown tongue, my spirit pray it, and my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. There's a different way of praying. I will pray with the spirit deep inside me. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Look at John 11. Verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit. A spiritual prayer. A spirit rising up against the demonic spirit of death. It was about Lazarus. 
He, he groaned in the spirit. That is a way of praying. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. Paul says, my little children. Of whom I travail in birth again. Until Christ be formed in you. Now, travailing. There are different levels of prayer and intercession. You get people praying, making supplication. Then you get warfare. You get travail. You get birthing. Uh, all sorts of things take place when you are an habitual intercessor. All sorts of things take place. Sometimes, now I'm talking from experience, I've been involved in intercession for close to 34, 35 years around the country. Establishing intercessors, teaching intercessors in Cape Town, Eldorado Park, in Durban. Like, so you, you, you climbed into different levels. When the Holy Spirit births your ministry, I'm not talking about somebody laid a hand and says, let's say the Lord, that's, not, that's fine. But when that happens, it is not enough. Believe you me. If the man says, the Lord has called you to be a pastor, you're not a pastor. The Holy Spirit must birth forth that calling. And that's born out of intercession. You ain't going to be a pastor. Until the Holy Spirit confirms what was prophesied. It must be birthed forth. And when something, when your ministry is birthed forth, nobody can take that from you. Nobody can. The ministry of Dr. Siva Mudli was birthed forth in intercession. There is a maternity word. That's where everything happens in the maternity ward, in the spirit realm, where your ministry is birthed forth, where your healing is birthed forth, where your miracle is birthed forth. Whatever your request is, it must be birthed forth. It's got to come forth. It's got to come forth. Because when it's, when it's birthed forth, you cannot Revoke it. It's irrevocable. You cannot reverse. You can't say, I don't want this child anymore. Put the child back inside the stomach. You can't do it. The power of intercession. You come to a level where you birth. It, it is a place where you can stand still or you can bow down still and not say a word, but inside here yeah, it it comes out. You can feel the birthing taking place. Birthing, the Holy Spirit is birthing for you. Pray for something now in your understanding, in your mind. Now the Holy Spirit wants to birth it for it's a beautiful experience. That is why do not forsake prayer and intercession. Find some time. It's very difficult to pray in the afternoons after work. It's very hard. The mind is tired, your body is tired. But that early morning, if you can make some time, 15 minutes to start with that. Early in the morning. You can pray in the afternoon. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, uh, you're, like, you, you're tired. You know, you're tired. I mean, you look at a child. A child can only listen. You know, children can only listen maximum one hour. Maximum one hour. Our school timetables... I designed wrongly to you. You got two hours and sometimes three hours before you have a break. It's, it's wrong. Ch uh, children can only tolerate one hour. After that, they're restless. <laughs> they're restless. They're all blocked out. So when you're tired, it's very hard to pray. Very, very hard. All right. Now, <clears throat> in the body of Christ, 
in the body of Christ, there are three intercessors needed that the Bible speaks about. In the body of Christ, the church of God, there are three intercessors that God, the Father, has established to be concerned with the human race. He has established three intercessors. One intercessor. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore he is able, talking about Christ, also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. You are being interceded for every single day, every moment. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. Picture, picture this. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. The Father is on the throne. Jesus is on the right hand. And what is Jesus doing on the right hand of the Father? He's interceding. He's forever making intercessions for you. You say, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for something. He's already praying for it. He just needs you to also do it down here. Why must you also pray? If two shall agree. Agree with the intercession of Christ. Agree. <coughs> say, Lord, I want this car. But I know you're also praying for it. So, I'm okay. I'm okay. I've got a contact. I'm okay. I'm praying for something, Lord, that you are already praying for. You're forever interceding for me. Two, I agree with you, Lord. Thank you. Romans 8.26 Likewise, the Spirit also help it, our infirmities. Holy Spirit now as an intercessor. We spoke about Jesus as an intercessor. But the Spirit, uh, we should not pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor on earth. Jesus is an intercessor on the right hand of the Father in the third heavens. But on planet earth, the Holy Spirit is on planet earth. He's inside you. He is making intercession here yeah, for you. And the intercession of the Holy Spirit for you on your behalf tallies with the intercession of Christ on the right hand side of the Father because Christ knows the will of God, the will of the Father. So now, we have an agreement. We have the Holy Spirit within you that's also praying for you. But see what God says. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. There's another intercessor. He's, he's called man. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. God sees the land. Like when God looks at South Africa with the corruption, he's looking for intercessor. If there's no intercessor, he will destroy the land. Land is land. No matter what name the land is. It can be USA, Russia, South Africa. If there are no intercessors, he will destroy the land. Straightforward. So we have three kinds of intercessors. Look at Isaiah 59, verse 16. And he saw, God saw, and he saw that there was no man and wondered there was no intercessor. I is wondering, what is wrong with these people? This thing is happening, that thing is happening, the corruption is like this. 
There's just this so much of nonsense. Every department in this country is gone down, which is the facts of life. Corruption, sin, and is wondering where are the intercessors? And the body of Christ need to change. They need to get people into intercession. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. It doesn't mean you only pray, but he's trying to tell you it, the most outstanding ministry there must be prayer. Because prayer will produce worshippers. God seeking through worshippers. Prayer will produce true worshippers. Prayer will change your life, bring you into holiness, into righteousness. It says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So, the, so there's three intercessors. The whole issue of the church of God, three intercessors. Remember, if Jesus is praying for the same thing that you are praying for, try to understand, understand the power, what happens to your simple prayer. Your simple prayer down on the earth, Jesus is also praying, but when Jesus talks, the Bible says he sent for his word. The difference between you effuses with your word, with your prayer. He superimposes your prayer and he sends forth your prayer. He sends forth his word and he says, my word will never return unto me void. He takes your prayer. He super, he super imposed your prayer, your request with his intercessions and he sends it forth as what? Quick and sharper. Quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Think about your prayer. Your prayer changes because he praying for you. Because the Holy Spirit inside you is praying. Sends forth his word. And the Bible says, when the word goes forth, it separates the soul from the spirit. It discerns your thoughts. It's a discern of thoughts. That kind of prayer. It goes into the marrow of your bones. That's the power of the word that comes out of the word. Out of Christ. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth out of the mouth of God. That word, you're praying here, yeah, but that word gives life to your prayer. Everything that you talk to God about, you speak, you utter, it's superimposed. By the intercessions of Christ on the right hand of the Father. Remember Jesus said, let there be light. I mean, look at that kind of intercession. Let there be light. You say, oh, 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 Lord, my God. I, I need a house. I need a house. Jesus said, let there be a house. We need... To be intercessors, to come into oneness with the intercessor, Christ Jesus. Because he responds totally different. His voice, the Bible says, is like as a sound of many waters. He says, Lord, I want a job. But his voice, he's saying the same thing. But his voice is like a sound of many waters. He is for you. 
and he superimposes your request intercession do you remember I think it's in Genesis chapter 3 yes Genesis uh, have you got okay in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 to 9 Adam and Eve in the garden and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees now what I want you to understand is that they heard the voice of the Lord walking the voice was walking they heard the sound they heard a voice walking the power of the voice of God when God speaks how he takes your intercession and your prayer they were they were afraid when they heard the voice of God walking because God amplifies your voice and your prayer I'm going to okay let's look at Hebrews 7 verse 25 uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm on the wrong track there sorry Revelation 8 verse 1 and 6 Revelation 8 verse 1 and 6 this is the last part okay now this is where you are not to miss this part where prayer and worship is treated the same prayer is priori prioritized uh, just like how worship is prioritized there's nothing else in the bible that's prioritized like prayer and worship see what happens in the book of revelation and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about half an hour space of half an hour silence in heaven for half an hour what could have brought such a silence and i saw seven angels which stood before god and to them were given seven trumpets we are talking about what happened to all your prayers all the years we're talking about what happened to the first prayer that you prayed what happened to the prayer 20 years ago now you are seeing what happened and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer a golden container and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints all the saints all your prayers were being collected all your prayer were, were being banked all the time all those years your prayer was put into a bank and the seal is broken and released would the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar and was before the throne it's telling you how important your prayer is golden altar golden incense throne of god incense coming before the father how important your prayer is your voice your requests and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before god out of the angel's hand imagine that's what's happening right now to god all your prayers and all your requests and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth look how your prayer is being treated look at all your prayers how it's being treated with fire and there were voices your voices thunderings and lightning coming from the throne thundering and lightning all on your behalf superimposing with your prayers with your requests and cast into the earth uh, 
thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. The impact when God speaks on your behalf, when He intercedes your request, when He takes forth your request, He takes your prayers forward with thunderings and lightnings. Dare you trivialize your prayer? Don't you do that. Whatever you prayed for and you still did not get your result, well, this is what's going on day and night with your prayers. Do not give up. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now that is a, that is a very powerful picture in heaven about your prayers. It's the smallest request to the biggest request. So my encouragement to you in closing, I want to say, start a prayer life. Start a prayer life. Go back to the things you wanted that you did not get yet also. And, and remind God, wow, this is what's happening. My prayers are still with you. It's at your throne. It's there. And say, Lord, well, I'm waiting now. Two years went, three years went. I'm waiting for my results. I know it's being sent for with lightnings and thunderings. And I, I, and I thank you, Father. I thank you that my prayer, my request will be manifested because of you, because you prioritize prayer. Do you know one part in the Bible? Let me just read that verse before we close. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 13. It's a very important verse. Uh, God says, Son of man, when the land sinned against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it. And I will break the staff of the bread thereof, and I will send famine upon it, and I will cut off man and beast from it. But see what God says. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver by their own souls, by their righteousness. What God is saying when you read the whole thing, even when you're at home, there's more to read. What God is saying, when the land sinned so much and they ignore the things of God, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job prays for the land, I'm not healing the land. I'm not healing it. I will heal. I will bless Noah, Daniel, and Job. But the land, no. Because when the land reaches a certain state, when the people turn their hearts from God, they're not coming to God in prayer and intercession. And the land has deteriorated. God comes to a point where he just washes his hand out of it. And he only, he only operates with the righteous people on the land. There may be 10,000, maybe 1 million. He will respond to the righteous people, to his people. But he might, he might not respond to the healing of the land. That is why we need, we need a miracle in this country. We need a miracle right through the whole of parliament. We need a miracle. Something got to be done before it's too late. But it can start with you and me at home. Asking God to birth for intercessors. We can pray and intercede in a small way. But we need to ask God to release more intercessors who will carry the land of South Africa inside them. Inside them. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your throne. Father, teach us to pray, give us a desire to come 
before your face. Give us a desire to want to hear your voice. Give us strength so that we will never give up on praying. Lord, we need to pray for our families. We need to carry them over. Help us, Abba Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit inside us. The Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf. The Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray. So that we can pray the same prayer that Christ is interceding on the right hand of the Father. We submit and we surrender to you. We pledge, Father, in Jesus' name, that we will take that bold step and start a prayer life. Help us to pray for our families, to lay hands if we can, to pray for them. Help us to pray against demonic forces in the name of Jesus. Help us to cancel generational curses in the name of Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit, to destroy the wickedness in high places, the principalities and the powers, so that they will have no rights, no authority over our lives in Jesus' name. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be intercessors. So when God the Father looks, look into our family. God must find an intercessor. Or more, when God looks at our communities falling apart, God must find an intercessor. When God looks at our land, He must find intercessors there. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, to arrest the inhabitants of South Africa and bring forth those intercessors. Revive them. Revive them so that our land will be saved Father, from destruction. And we ask this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.